for Yalesville, Connecticut driver Ronnie Rocco. He'll start 17th, 18th will be car number 8 for Bob Lamfiard of Waterford, the Reynolds Welding, Gear Sanitation, Marin Engines Cavalier starts 18th. Starting 19th, driving car number 45, a second for the final time. It's time to go racing open wheel modified style. 24 of the best. Get the green flag from Danny Cordaway, and we're underway with Burt Marvin setting a blistering pace through turns one and two and down the back straightaway. Two and three wide. The action continues. Hot and heavy in the middle of the pack. The drivers shuffle the deck. Everybody looking for a top finish. Some of the heavy hitters stuck in traffic early in the going. A little slip sliding in the middle of the pack, but everybody stays pointed in the right direction. Black flag going out to the 98 car. He's down on the inside as we see smoke coming from the middle of the pack. Ricky Young tangled momentarily with Tommy Jensen. The 98 car headed to the infield. The remainder of the field stands on the throttle with Burt Marvin out front, everybody else in hot pursuit. Frank Mucciacciario in the infield, safely out of harm's way. The remainder of the field continues. The jockey for a spot. Everybody looking for a top finish here tonight. Once again, the Acme stores, AC Delco, bonus bucks on the line. A $50 bonus to the winning modified driver. A lot of shuffling going on in the back of the pack. The new four-barrel carburetors really turning the times here tonight. Everybody on the move. Six laps posted as complete. Some of the heavy hitters stuck deep in traffic trying to navigate their way to the front of the field. Dave Baralt gets the black flag from the flag stand. Ramav and your leader. Ricky Knapp runs second. Lajden S is third, but we've got a caution on the speedway. Jimmy Smith, seven laps complete, 23 to go as we're back on the throttle and underway. Ricky Knapp jumps out of line with car number seven. Looks like Ronnie Rocco going around with the 31, anticipating the green this time by. Seven down, 23 to go, and the green is back out. Once again, Lajeunesse gets the bite on the inside. He gets up to second and immediately looks the challenge for the lead. Bermavin shuts the door in turn two. Lajeunesse pulls back in line. A host of heavy hitters breathing fire as Jimmy Dolan takes an excursion through the infield with car number 69. He comes back out. A few of the drivers scramble. And it looks as though the caution is being displayed. We'd have to guess for debris out on the speedway. The AC Delco, Acme Auto Stores, bonus bucks up for grabs. Green flag is back out as Burt Marvin being chased by Mark Lange and, Est and Ricky Knapp running up front. Problems up in turn number four. Dennis Gator in the wall, a host of cars making contact. Looks to be the 79. Marty Rocco back out with the 31. He'll pick up at the tail end. Anyway, Burmov and in control with car number 07. Mark Lajeunesse alongside. And we could have a brand new leader as Lajeunesse battling to the outside, looking for his first win in a couple of seasons. Standing tall, going the long way around. Teddy Christopher waiting in the wings with car number 54. Marvin sideways, slip sliding on the front stretch. Lajeunesse and Christopher in hot pursuit, both looking to chase down the leader. Teddy Christopher up to second. We've got some slip sliding in the middle of the pack. Lajeunesse now fighting his way back up once again. Running into third spot, chasing down the 54 of Christopher. Burt Marvin looking for his first win this season. Teddy Christopher looking for his second out of three. 
Majanez waiting in the wings. Now looks to the inside. Majanez tucked it down low, looking to get inside Teddy Christopher's number 54. The field stringing it out. Burt Marvin across the line. 13 laps are history, two laps shy of the halfway mark. Limited sportsman cars waiting in the pits for their opportunity to test their wares on the one-third mile oval. On a slip sliding back in the back. Everybody looking to finish up front. Halfway marker due out this time by. 15 down, 15 to go. Brent Marvin pulling away from Teddy Christopher and Lajeunesse. Ricky Knapp with a good run, showing in the fourth spot. Bob Potter moving into fifth, Jerry Pearl runs sixth. Bob Potter on the outside, the patented highway around. Six-time pass champion. Using a good handling car and plenty of horsepower to get the job accomplished. Bob Lampier down on the apron. Everybody able to get on by. We've got trouble on the front stretch. Larry Lampier loops car number 12. Oh, a nice piece of driving as Brother Bob comes up just a bit shy. The seat, folks. 18 down, 12 to go. They're about to send him on their merry way. Problem up front. Mark Lajeunesse. Able to take advantage of Teddy Christopher down on the inside as they run side by side through the turns. And Lajeunesse moves into the runner-up position. A nice move down on the inside. Comes up very tall for Mark Lajeunesse. He's up to second. Bob Potter's up to third. And Teddy Christopher drops back to the fourth spot with Jerry Pearl fifth. B.C. Wood off the pace with car number 03 as Burt Marvin continues to set the pace out front with gun number 07 with Lajeunesse, Potter, Christopher, and Pearl along with Ricky Knapp in hot pursuit. Rocco also on the move with gun number 31. He's pulling up with the front runners. Nine laps to go as time now becomes ever important. Caution flag, car number eight in trouble. Bob Lampier brings out the caution. He stuck on Young, will be the trophy queen for this particular event. But right now, we've got to wind him up once again with a nine lap shootout remaining. Once again, it's Burt Marvin out front. He opens the door for Lajeunesse and for Potter. Lajeunesse goes the high way around, Potter goes the low way around, and it looks as though Bob Potter, the current point leader, has worked his way into contention and looking to challenge for the win. Close and personal, Bob Potter takes a peek to the inside. Problems on the back stretch, trouble. Jimmy Dolan is facing the wrong way in turn two. They wind him up, play the game down the back straightaway. Let's see who gets the drop on the green. And it looks to be Marvin sideways off the turn. And he puts Bob Potter in the wall and Mark Lajeunesse to the infield. Teddy Christopher moves into the runner-up spot as the caution comes back out with Bob Potter limping down the back straightaway. They wind him up once again. This time Marvin has the edge. Teddy Christopher gets out of line and Jerry Pearl moves into the runner-up spot. Ricky Knapp moves up to third and Potter limping around with car number one. And Teddy Christopher in trouble in turn number two. Evidently, Christopher packed the green flag action. Green quickly back out. Burt Marvin out front being pursued by the 43 of Jerry Pearl. Two and three wide through the turn. And Ricky Young moves into the number three position. A new contender flexing his muscles as the flying zero is on the move. Burt Marvin, Jerry Pearl, Ricky Young, Ricky Knapp, David Gator, and Marshall White. That's your top six. 
It looks as though we have just six laps to go. Jerry Pearl bobbles momentarily off turn number two. Hard on the throttle looking to catch up with our leader. Problem in the middle of the pack. It evaporates and we stay under green as Burr Marvin jumps out of line and the Porter and Chester Institute number 43 takes over control. Time running out. Burt Marvin losing a tire on the 07. Slides off up in turn number four. Jerry Pearl, your leader. In control is Burt Marvin. Is in the end at this time. Actually, I think he was third and picked up the win. But right now it's back to green with Jerry Pearl leading the charge off that fourth turn into turn number one. A little bump and go in the middle of the pack. Ronnie Rocco on the outside. Rocco battling for the runner-up honors. Looks to the outside of Rick Young. Sets his sights around the outside of Jerry Pearl. Don't count out the rocket. Next time around, it'll be but two circuits to go as he takes a look at the outside of Jerry Pearl. Two to go, Mark Ruff. This time around as Jerry Pearl continues to lead the 31 of Ronnie Rocco. Rocco working up high with that automobile. Pearl down low with the Porter of Chester. 43 white flag due out this time around. The zero of Ricky Young has the one of Bobby Potter right up alongside, but Jerry Pearl now breaking out into his own. Out of the turn, number four for the final time, Jerry Pearl picks up win number one. Settling for the runner-up spot, the course, Paul's TV, sponsored Dodge Charger for Yalesville, Connecticut driver Ron Rocco. Unofficially in for the third spot. Car number one for Bob Potter of Norwich and unofficially in for the fourth position. The flying zero for Ricky Young of Canterbury. Ricky Knapp unofficially in for the fifth position with car number seven. As Jerry Pearl looks to pull down into victory lane. Danny Cordaway congratulating the driver. Far. Claire, you had a shot. Your son was almost in this one. As Mrs. Young will make the trophy presentation to the winning driver. She's the mother of Ricky Young, who we're not quite sure, but it looks like he might have finished in the fourth spot with the flying zero. But in victory lane for the first time this year, driving the Porter and Chester sponsored number 43, hailing from Colchester, Connecticut, as Jerry Pearl picks up his first win of the year. 30 lap modified feature event, Mr. Jerry Pearl from Colchester, Connecticut. A lot of free raffle prizes. A jacket's going out to the next prize winner, and here you are in victory lane. Boy, that's quite a nice, tidy little package, Mr. Pearl. Well, I really appreciate all the help from Porter and Chester. The, they, if they didn't help me, I sure wouldn't be here, I'll tell you right now. Well, you know, it's always nice to pick up a little financial support. It goes a long way when you're racing on a tight budget. They call you a backyard racer, but boy, I'll tell you, you look top notch tonight. Well, we had a few problems all night long. Cars seem to be going better and better to, as the night went on. There's a lot of people i like to thank. One is Porter and Chester, all the guys that helped me. All my nephews, they're here summers. They helped buy me a tire tonight. Well, we can hear them up there. You know, Jerry, it was a tough race out there. It was a quick pace. Did you ever think you had a shot at it when the half a dozen guys were battling up front and you were sitting there watching it all? No, I, I just I just couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, I thought when Teddy got to the front, it was all over, and I just hung on, and uh, I just can't believe it. we're here right now. Well, you know, you're running right up there in points. Is that one of the primary objects of the season? Well, we're going to try our best. You know, points is one thing, but you got to get a lot of upfront finishes. You know, Jerry, we got Holly. We're going to get her right in here. Congratulations once again. Holly's from Porter and Chester Institute, and we have the next prize winner right here. It's going to get a beautiful Waterford jacket. 